A few weeks ago, we told you the story of Cambodia's Muslims and how they suffered at the hands of the brutal Khmer Rouge. A sizable community of Cham Muslims, as they are known, also lives in neighboring Vietnam. And like Cambodia's Muslims, Vietnam's Islamic faithful have also endured great adversity. But as Susan Yu discovered, somehow they've been able to thrive. They are descendants of a warrior civilization, a matrilineal society whose history can be traced back as far as the second century AD. 800 years ago, the Cham defeated the mighty Khmer Empire at Angkor in Cambodia. But two centuries later, they were themselves defeated by an invading Vietnamese army. In the 1970s, the atrocities of the Khmer Rouge nearly wiped the Cham out. But somehow, they have clung on, weathering adversity and refusing to let their culture and way of life die in Indochina. Personal Professor Wen Van Hui is an expert on the history of Cham people and other ethnic minorities in Vietnam. The Cham people have a long history in Vietnam. There are up to half a million in the country, and there are mostly in the southern provinces. During the time of the Champa Kingdom, they ruled mostly what is now central Vietnam and had a booming cultural identity. The Cham were not always Muslim. They only embraced Islam in the 15th century when the Vietnamese defeated them. Today in Vietnam, this hamlet near the border with Cambodia has become a place of refuge for Cham Muslims. The Cham ethnic minority in Chao Doc and in An Zhang province follow religiously the Muslim faith. They have their mosques and religiously follow the Quran. Several village chiefs oversee this Islamic community of roughly 5,000. 76-year-old Samal is one of them. He's witnessed some of the most turbulent times in recent Cham history. Our ancestors have suffered badly. When we Cham people came to Vietnam, there was already a minority of our people here. And of course, we are lucky the Khmer Rouge never got this far into this area. While their fellow Cham in Cambodia were marked for extermination by the Khmer Rouge, the Cham people here were able to safely practice their Islamic rites, but only just. The Khmer Rouge never came, so our lives were never disrupted. All they did was make lots of threats and lots of shouting from the border. They were just about 10 kilometers away, but in one district, the Khmer Rouge burned down their houses and killed thousands of people. In April of 1978, Khmer Rouge guerrillas crossed into Vietnam and raided villages in nearby Ba Chok district. They tortured and killed more than 3,000 civilians. Still, the Cham have endured. The community's resilience is reflected in how they've managed to retain their beliefs while adapting to their changing fortunes. The Muslim community makes up less than a half a percent of the Vietnamese population. But don't be fooled by that humble statistic. Village elders are proud that the Islamic faith and the Muslim way of life have been able to thrive. These women are practicing a craft in a way that in other Islamic communities would be considered taboo. Weaving in public view and using their traditional skills to earn money go against orthodox practice. But weavers like Salamat aren't worried about being sacrilegious. The 29-year-old provides an income for her family, a responsibility sanctioned by the Cham Muslim community. Traditionally, we couldn't go outside to do this. We had to stay indoors. But today, we're able to preserve this tradition. It was much more difficult in the past to do this. 
This allows us to make a living, and that means we can help our families. The men support what we are doing. A long time ago, we were able to be completely orthodox, practicing the ways of Islam 100%. Today, it's about 60 to 70% because of our economic situation. The ladies who normally stay indoors and wear veils are now leaving their homes to help their families by selling their products at the market. We try our best to preserve the Muslim cham tradition. Muslims around the world pray five times a day and aim to make the pilgrimage to Mecca at least once in their lives. In Vietnam, the Cham Muslims pray every Friday, and rather than the month-long fast during Ramadan, the dawn-to-dusk ritual is observed for just three days. Pork is not consumed, but alcohol is allowed. Village elders say these variations have no negative bearing on their commitment to their God Allah. And to ensure the virtues of the Quran remain strong in the community, the young learn the scriptures religiously. In the morning they are taught in Vietnamese, and then in the afternoon they learn the Quran. It's extremely important for them and the future. Decades ago, large numbers of Muslims immersed themselves into Vietnamese culture to have what was thought to be better opportunities outside the Cham community. There were many myths and misunderstandings about the Cham and other ethnic minorities 50 to 60 years ago. The Vietnamese didn't understand their culture and traditions, so they thought these people were inferior. Perceptions have slowly been changing, so these days there's intermarrying going on and there are shared interests. Professor Nguyen Van Hui says Vietnam has come a long way in understanding the Cham and other minorities. Determined to preserve part of the Muslim Cham heritage, the ethnologist had 16 workmen dismantle and relocate this house from a remote southern village to the Ethnology Museum in Hanoi. It's one of only five authentic Muslim Cham structures that still exists intact. In 10 years' time, the charm in Vietnam will definitely grow and develop. We know this because when we take a census every decade, we discover their numbers are increasing and they are still enjoying their traditions and culture. Indeed, one glimpse into a Cham village such as this one in Chodok gives a sense of their community spirit. Time has only enriched their Muslim way of life, creating a stronger thread in Vietnam's diverse cultural fabric.